we got another problem this one is uh, this one's screwing up too caps are bad in that one too but the purpose of this video is to show how to find the value of the internal capacitors inside the IF can the mica capacitors and this is video number two this over here is video number one which is the second IF transformer which is a, a progress and work I need to go to the electronics store and get the rest of the capacitors. So what the first thing I need to do is I need to remove the IF transformer. And it looks like this one has some stuff. This is actually the discriminator transformer. So this one's a little bit different when it comes to the uh, alignment steps. There's two alignment steps. There's peaking and then zeroing and we'll go through that. But the first thing I'm going to do is pull the IF transformer, then I'm going to remove the internal capacitors, then we'll find the value. So the, I got the wire pulled off and I'm going to have, this is going to be kind of an odd way, I'm going to have to kind of go up and over to keep the camera from blurring out. But the first thing we want to do here I'm sure someone's hemorrhaging because I'm not using some $30,000 soldering station. This is one of the best irons I've ever owned. So the first thing we want to do here is add some new solder to these leads. Okay, it just helps lube things up. Just a little bit, just to kind of wet, wet it back down. All right, we got uh, six leads on this. We got a center tapped transformer plus a ground lead. Then we want to take our solder bubble thingy here and we're going to heat it up. I'm trying to do this so the camera doesn't freak out. I don't think I can. I don't think I can get access. Let me try it from over here. Heat it up so it gets all nice and melty. Then we're going to stick this down over the top and slurp it off. And we got a nice clean. The key to doing this is to add add some fresh solder to it. All right, that's enough of that. You get the idea. And that's it. The IF transformer pops right out. So easy. Much easier than trying to deal with solder wick. Solder wick works great for transistorized stuff where you have small pads and low amounts of solder but for this big stuff you use half a roll of solder wick you end up applying way too much heat for way too long and you can damage a transformer this is how I have learned to do it over a lot of years of experience so let's take this outside we'll get it apart and we'll analyze the inside of it I'm curious to see the different lighting between the metal halide light I set up in the house and natural light outside. So we'll take a look at the orientation here. And you can see where the green dot is uh, compared to the, the can ground. And now we'll just take the pliers and we'll un, uncrimp these little uh, things here and here and pull it apart. Well, this is a bit interesting. The um, 
schematic shows two capacitors in this IF transformer and it only has one right right there and as I describe in video one these IF transformers are a bit different than most of them um, most of them are not this simple and this easy to work on but you could see there's only one capacitor here uh, we'll turn it around there is nothing and I'll show you where the schematic shows too so this is kinda interesting I wonder if the other one is external somewhere let's see if we can't focus in on that real nice and have a real nice look at what we got here you can see that that thing is not soldered And I don't know if that's going to show up, but like the other one, this one has the liquid. There's liquid under where these points were touching that capacitor. I don't know what that's about. And again, like the other one, this one is all oily. I am not understanding what this liquid is. You can see the liquid there. Going out of frame here a little bit. Sorry about that. There we go. Got to get the guts out. And then this thing is still all wet. I got to clean this up. So that capacitor was between these two pins right here, which are the two pins that go directly to the 6AL5. Here's the 6AL5. Here's the capacitor that we took out. This capacitor is non-existent. I don't know what's up with that, but it's not even on the outside. Maybe a different version of the transformer. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a variable capacitor here keep in mind I have not turned the slugs in here I have not touched those I will do that very last and then we need to do the balancing adjustment to so on this one we're going to need to do this which is DC probe to point K and then low to ground and we want to adjust for a zero reading a positive or negative this is highly critical because the AFC will never work right if this thing is out of alignment with the rest of the IF. So this is almost the most critical uh, alignment in the whole thing. Alright, I hope I've got this all in frame. You can see we're 0.19 volts right now. Signal generator is fed into the test point. I'm on that test point K or whatever that was. 10.7 megahertz. And as I rotate this thing, I should start to see voltage. It's kind of weird. I'm not seeing anything right now. I should start to see voltage. And then... Um, 
right now I'm positive I'm turning it very slowly you can see it coming up there you can see it just went negative and it's a negative negative so it'll peak man this is touchy I'm going the wrong way, so I'm negative now, negative, negative, coming up, should start to drop back down there, it's dropping back down, and there it went positive, and then if I go the other way, it'll go positive the same amount, so what I want to do is I want to zero this, man, is that a touchy adjustment. I'm going to have to just, ooh, look at that. I'm going to have to just get close with this, and then I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to try different capacitors in there, probably in three picofarad steps until I get it. Okay, so if I go to the signal generator, I should get the same response. So I'm on 10.7. There's 10.6, so it went to negative 2. And I go to 10.8, it goes to positive 2. Look at that. 0 at 10.7, at negative 2 at 10.6, positive 2 at 10.8. Isn't that neat how that works? Now what I need to do is pull that capacitor out of there and oh, let me show what I've done there you can see I just got a little uh, what are these 10 to 100 picofarad trimmers pulled the capacitor out measuring it with the Navy this is a very accurate capacitor tester for low values turning the wrong knob getting a nice wide eye around 36 pico puffs so now what we'll do is we'll try some 33 36 and 39 pico puff capacitors in there and see which one gets me closest to zero and then what I can do is I could go back and um, tweak the core to bring it in and as seen in the previous video I grab these, these are NPOs. Still think we probably need to do uh, one percenters if I can find them in here. But we got basically 12, 18, 20, 25, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39. So I said um, 36. So we'll start with a 36 and we'll see what happens there. Okay, 36 picofarad gives us 2.7 to positive 2.72 volts. Let's go to a 30. Okay, I went to a 33. I went from a 36 to a 33. Sorry, not uh, not a 30. And at 10.7, I have. Uh, 0.45, 450 millivolts. At 10.6, I have one negative 1.83, and at 10.8, I have 2.40. This is perfect. Um, I'm not going to screw with this because that is well within. That is well within what I can tune with the core there. So that's it. I'm going to go with some nice short leads and solder that uh, 33 NPO in there and leave it. Now, I will do the, the first IF transformer. I'll do a whole other video on it 
uh, why not why not I'm doing all three I'm still I still have to get this is a variable cap for me trying to figure out the values on the first capacitor so I gotta pick up some stuff at the electronics store so this is video number two and we'll do video number three uh, after I get back from the electronics store because IF transformer one and two are the same there it is soldered in now I was gonna solder it to the bottom of the tube socket because it was easier but I figured there'd be less heat generated here because the bottom of the tube sockets get pretty hot you can tell that by the discoloration around the board so anyway I'm at uh, negative half a volt let's uh, go in here and see if we can center it out should be the top slug so if we go this way we go up we go this way we go down to zero then we start to go positive and we'll just try and get this right at zero eh, close enough so then if we come down here and we go to 10.6 get negative 2 volts if we come down here and we go to 10.8 get positive two volts beautiful just what I want to see